This is LBC with Clive Bull. LBC, I'm Clive Bull. We're talking about the stressful job of being a teacher. And figures today suggesting one in ten teachers is taking antidepressants to cope with the job. Uh, let's talk now to uh, Frederica Roberts, who's a happiness and resilience specialist who works in schools with uh, teachers and pupils and a former secondary school teacher as well. Hello, Frederica. Hello, Clive. Uh, what was your experience like uh, uh, of being a teacher? Um, it wasn't a great experience. I did actually leave through stress. Um, I just woke up one morning, had a massive panic attack, and um, couldn't set foot in a classroom again. So um, it came as a bit of a surprise to me as well that about 12 years later I found myself working in schools, actually, with, uh, with pupils as well as teachers. But there is an awful lot of work to be done um, because mental health of teachers and of pupils is, is really in a crisis state at the moment. Mm. And what do you, I mean, various theories are being put forward as to what the cause of all this stress is. Well, what's your theory? Uh, well, yes, some of your uh, earlier callers were mentioning a few things like discipline. I mean, that was certainly a, a factor in me leaving the profession. Uh, expectations that, that some head teachers and leadership teams put on, on their teachers uh, because there is a lot of pressure coming down from the government on them and, and from Ofsted. The workload overall, the lack of support, I think all of those are definitely factors. I think teachers are under an increasing amount of pressure, certainly working with teachers day in day out now I think things have got a lot worse than they were when I was last in the classroom as a teacher um, I think teachers in this country particularly are not really respected as professionals anymore in the way that perhaps they used to be and in the way that they are in other countries such as mm. for example Finland um, so that that makes a big difference as well in terms of the discipline issues and in terms of the, the workload and the, the way that they're being supported or rather the way that they're not being supported they do work incredibly long hours uh, government policy changes constantly uh, which means that you know the goal po posts are constantly moving as well for teachers so not only they have a lot of pressure but that pressure is changing all the time as well uh, so as soon as they get used to one thing something changes so what, what kind of thing do you do to uh, to help the situation then uh, well, I mean, what what I do behind the scenes is that I, I do try and campaign as much as possible and mm. raise the, the issue because I think ultimately um, I can go into schools and uh, my colleague and I can go into schools with our program and work with teachers and everything, but really what we're doing is kind of, uh, you know, patching the problem up, whereas the, the issues do need to be solved. Uh, but in, initially what we have is a situation that we just have to deal with as it is and how can teachers help our children if they're struggling themselves that's the, the main issue here it's, it's like the good old oxygen mask you know when you're on a plane you have to help yourself before you can help other people so in in the workshops that we do with teachers and the presentations we do with them uh, we go back to some of the basics of positive psychology which will just hopefully help them and especially the ones perhaps when they're not at the complete crisis end to to try and avert that situation and try and prevent them getting into that situation so it's things like practicing daily gratitudes. Um, there's, there's been research done on that, that if you do that for seven days, writing down three good things, it can actually improve your happiness and even reduce depressive symptoms for up to six months. So they're very simple techniques that they can do, but what they do is they, it actually retrains your brain to not only focus on the things that are making your life miserable, mm. but to actually look at some of the good things in your life as well. Teaching them really simple, quick meditations, because time is at a premium for teachers we know that so if they can just take five ten minutes out in their day to do some simple breathing meditations or guided meditations that can also help them to really rebalance their well-being um, things like taking even just five ten minutes to walk outside get fresh air get outside into nature to, to break off their day and and again uh, allow them to kind of reset as well um, and then there are a sort of more involved things that we do with them, things like looking at their character strengths, for example. If, if any of your listeners want to look at that, and they can Google the VIA Institute, VIA Institute, um, and, and the work that's being done on character strengths, and they can kind of discover their key strengths. And again, there's research being done on that, that if you identify your key character strengths, you can then find new ways of working with one of your key strengths, for example. Mm. And that, again, can reduce depressive symptoms and improve happiness. So that's a little bit more involved. But again, doing work with them on that can be really helpful. 
And we encourage them to look at the, the future that they want for themselves and, and planning for their future. Uh, because, again, having something to plan for yeah. is really useful in terms of getting yourself past where you are. And, and there's interventions that we can do with them on that as well. well. Well, it's good to hear that such support is out there. I mean, the message I'm getting from a lot of people... Uh, is is that there's not enough support for teachers or for pupils for that matter. Um, Frederica, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Frederica Roberts there, 0345 6060 973.